everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Transformers Red robot enhanced design Transformers Prime Megatron. Now we'll get stuck straight into it by first of all taking a look here at the boxer. Much like Optimus Prime this does sport the brand new design here for the RED figures in the sense that it no longer has that plastic see-through window and as you guys can see we get a wicked image there of the Transformers Prime Megatron much like Optimus Prime never looking better. We've got non-converted figure here at the bottom and as we take a look here at the side you'll notice that sadly he comes with significantly less when in comparison to Optimus but we do get some pretty awesome looking dark energon blast effects and then as we spin our attention here to the back also much like Optimus we get some product shots which sadly are super misleading as the final figure does not resemble anything like this in regards to color deco but it does show you Megatron there looking cool with that energon blast effect as well as some alternate hands and of course here this really nice effect for the blade. So we'll crack Megatron out of the packaging and then of course see how he stacks up compared alongside some of the other robot enhanced design figures. And so here we have the Transformers Prime Megatron out of the packaging and sorry to start off on a bad note but I do not like this thing whatsoever. This really is a massive step in the wrong direction and this RED line is just a train wreck, an absolute train wreck. It needs a massive kick up the backside and they literally need to bring someone over from the classified team as considering these are priced at the same point as you would expect from the G.I. Joe range, I am just completely baffled as to how this is able to slip through design. This thing is just so bad in terms of engineering and the materials are just garbage. Really, really terrible. Now, we'll take a look here at the sculpt work. Design-wise, much like Optimus, this looks fantastic. I really do think it resembles Megatron as seen on the show, but the paintwork is just absolutely astronomically terrible. It looks so, so bad. It's basically just grey plastic and the vast majority of it is squishy, pliable, and is just so, so tedious to actually get this guy into any type of pose. Now, as we take a look here at Megatron's head sculpt, this doesn't look too bad. It is the only area which really has any definition due to the nice paint. So you can see we do get a nice gun metal, which does show some of the sculpting and detailing, the mouthpiece, as well as there for the eyes. But the rest of the head just looks super cheap looking. And I did actually have to bring out my clippers to sand down some of these nubs. There are just so many nubs on this guy, which really overall make him look terrible. I'll be sure to point some of them out throughout the video, but yeah, they definitely needed to clean some of those up. Here for the chest, this is surprisingly actually solid plastic. We've got a nice Decepticon logo, as well as some pretty bland looking purple paint apps. They're nowhere near as metallic as shown on the back of the box. And this entire region, had it been spruced up with some metallic silver, definitely would have looked a lot better. Now, as we come here to the shoulders, design-wise, they look pretty nicely done, but these two are also made out of the that very malleable type of plastic so you definitely can squish it around and basically bend it out of the way as we come here to the arms there's some nice definition here to the middle of the bicep and I think the sculpt work for this section looks pretty decent as so does it here for the hand and as we actually take a look at the back of Megatron this if I'm going to be honest looks so much nicer when in comparison to the front I'm not too sure what it is about these prime figures but even Optimus had some really nice silver on the back of him whereas for the front it was really bland and the same can also be said here for Megatron the depth definition here looks awesome. I mean, just check out some of this panel lining that we've got here at the back just to pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt. This is something that we should have seen for the front of the release. I think this looks really nicely done. The sculpt work is so, so cool. You can even see some of that energon kind of bleeding through here for the back of the arms, which looks nice. I think overall this has turned out really, really well done, but you can see some of those nubs, which I personally think looks super cheap and is something that besides this line, I haven't personally seen on any other action figure from Hasbro. None of the classified series have any of this kind of uncut finished to the plastic. So I have no idea what's going on in regards to these red figures. You can see here for this arm, we do get the fusion cannon, really bland looking. Sadly, they haven't even painted the actual barrel, unlike what was seen on the package. So this also looks terrible unless you have the blast effect inserted. And as far as the blade is concerned, this thing is just a nightmare. This is super pliable. I've tried to reheat this so many times and it just continuously wants to warp and will just not stay straight. So this also really poor accessory and then as we just come down here to the front of the legs overall the sculpt work isn't actually bad looking but the paint is in a dire need of a kick up the backside now articulation this has got to be one of the most frustrating red figures that i've reviewed over on the channel in quite some time this thing is a pain in the backside so to showcase the head we merely do just get a swivel and honestly it's nothing to write home about it's literally just left to right 
and it can't even really look up and down that far. Now as we come here to the arms, much like I mentioned when I reviewed Optimus, considering that they are basically attaching pliable pieces onto pliable pieces, what ends up happening is the plastic warps on itself and it basically turns into mush. So to demonstrate that, just to manipulate Megatron's arm, it continuously wants to spring back into place i can push it all the way up to the top and as you guys can see it will slowly warp and bend and it may keep that position but any other pose as you can see it just always wants to spring it's almost like a fast action battler i guess it's got that going for it but trust me when i say just to get this guy in a simple pose is so so difficult and for a comparison here i actually have a classified series figure so here we have the cobra commander this thing is made out of solid hard plastic i can pose the joints around any way that i so choose and as you can see they do not warp they do not spring back into place and this costs exactly the same as this megatron there is just no comparison here in my opinion at all these are vastly superior and considering that they're both action figures coming out from hasbro it's really beyond me what the design teams are getting up to in regards to these robot enhanced design figures as we come here to the actual shoulder itself once again they can hinge out of the way but yet again it's made out of that very rubbery material we do get a rotation here at the bicep merely just 90 and i've seen a better range on a figure of which can actually transform we do get a swivel here at the wrist but this too is also kind of pliable there is a hinge joint, but to be honest, you're really not going to get much out of it without it actually popping off. I mean, you can just see how gummy that plastic is. It's just so, so bad. We do get kind of an upper torso ball joint, so this can rotate left to right, as well as crunch ever so slightly forwards, backwards, and can tilt side to side. So much like Optimus, this really is the saving grace of articulation, in my personal opinion. Surprisingly, we actually do get drop-down hips here for Megatron, but it is to a minimal range. So as you can see, it merely just shifts up that far so that really is just completely pointless it can kick forwards but you'll have to bend it at a slight angle due to the nature of the design it can kick back out to the side slightly as well as can also rotate here at the upper thigh we do get a double joint here at the knee but much like prime due to the nature of the design basically no matter what way you bend this it's still going to be at 90 so you can bend it with this kind of taking the main focus and as you can see it will go to 90 or what you can do is bend here and as you can see, once again, it really does just go to 90. So that is super poor. And then as we come down here to the feet, these can pivot back as well as forwards. And as far as the ankle tilt is concerned, basically non-existent, considering the only area that you would perhaps want to be pliable is solid plastic. So you cannot get a decent rocker out of this at all. Overall, just an absolute terrible terrible figure really disappointed with this guy the actual sculpt is nice but the materials the lack of paint and the articulation is just so disappointing in my opinion now as far as accessories go we may as well just get them out of the way to start things off we actually get a really cool dark energon effect as you can see this looks wicked really does resemble what we would see in the show i like how it's very dark here at the base and then gradually becomes lighter this basically does just slide over the top here of the blade and that looks decent but in terms of posing i mean you're really not going to be able to get much out of this at all considering the arm continuously wants to spring back into place unless you pull this here all the way up. I have no idea as to why gummy materials are being pegged into gummy materials. Just crazy, crazy stuff. Now you can actually remove both the fusion cannon and the arm blade if you want. I do believe in the show he doesn't always have this deployed so if you wanted the arm blade detached that is definitely something you can do. Now as we come back here to the fusion cannon, to go back to my earlier point, unless you have the effect attached as you can see the tip of this looks terrible so we can bring this in this is actually the only thing that is proper solid plastic how on earth the blast effect can be made out of a more sturdy material when in comparison to the figure itself is just nuts it's nuts but anyway as you can see cast out of this really nice dark energon and it does just peg here into the barrel but considering it's the only weighty thing that this figure comes with it will basically just topple him over so yeah, you're really not going to get much out of this at all. Posability wise, I really don't think this offers much. And if I'm going to be honest, I do think it's slightly too long. Had they made it a little larger where kind of the impact would be and then it gradually got a little shorter to kind of form this ball section, I think that would have looked slightly cooler. But considering it's super long, 
it really doesn't look the best to me. He doesn't include a dark star saber, which I'm not too sure as to why, as he did use that quite frequently on the show. And I guess the same also goes for Optimus. And then finally, we do get a pair of, I guess, relaxed hands. I'm not too sure what these are supposed to be. There's definitely not gripping hands, as there's nothing that he can actually grip with these. The sculpt isn't too bad. Definitely does capture that kind of anime-esque feel that you would get from these characters in the show. And as far as swapping these out goes, you basically do just pull off this hand but as you can see I've already got a stress mark here on the base as I mentioned in the Optimus review considering that this is so pliable you literally cannot bend that hinge joint at all it just wants to bend the plastic so super super frustrating so then you just peg these in just like that and that is how the more relaxed hand looks and I'll very quickly showcase it here for this side so just snap that in like so and there we have Megatron with those relaxed hands, which actually look pretty cool. I mean, he doesn't look bad as a display piece. If he was painted nicely, in terms of a Transformers Prime Megatron, he'd look pretty on point. But the materials are in a dire need of an upgrade, as so is the design in regards to the articulation. And turning to a few quick comparisons, here we have the Red Megatron compared alongside their version of Optimus Prime. And to be honest, I actually think I was too harsh on this figure, as when you compare this Optimus to this Megatron, it's like night and day. This literally looks like a masterpiece in comparison. This guy, for the most part, is very sturdy. The articulation works very nicely. But overall, I mean, there is some critiques that I have in regards to the knees for this guy, and I wasn't a huge fan of the fact that the smokestacks weren't attached to the back. But overall, you can get this guy into some pretty cool posts whereas hit with this Megatron is just so frustrating but in terms of scale I'd say this is decent I do believe Megatron was actually a little bigger in the show when in comparison to Prime but it's not too far off I also got a few comments asking as to whether or not this Optimus Prime could hold the Star Saber that came with the APC Toys Prime and yes he absolutely can and as you guys can see looks pretty awesome whilst doing it I'll be sure to attach a few images towards the beginning of this video of him actually using this probably completely taking that version of Megatron Megatron out and for another comparison as I also failed to show it in my prime review here we have the red Optimus compared alongside the first edition APC Toys Prime so in terms of scale they're pretty much the same but if you have to choose between either of these oh my goodness this is definitely the figure that you have to pick up and here we have the red Megatron compared alongside the APC Toys release and there's no comparison here at all given the option between the two I would recommend this version any day of the week over this red version now granted design wise it looks pretty nice had they taken some of the silver paint that you can see for this figure and put it here on this guy I think he would have looked cool and I actually might custom paint these figures and perhaps the overall outcome will be better but the materials are garbage and the articulation is nowhere near up to par with some of their other Hasbro 6 inch lines. Even Black Series I think is better articulated and better made when in comparison here to some of these Transformers figures. Here is the red version of Transformers Prime Knockout and finally just for fun one of the better red figures that have come out the G1 version of Shockwave. Oh and very quickly the G1 red version of Megatron and sadly I'm only just noticing that this figure too has become victim to the yellowing problem as you can see for the shoulders these are definitely beginning to start to discolor which is just so unfortunate I have no idea as to why we're experiencing such bad quality from Hasbro the prices appear to be continuously going up but the quality is definitely starting to dip down especially in regards to the main line as well this isn't just an issue for the red series I've also noticed some yellowing issues on some brand new figures from the actual Transform was mainline so Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. And so, some final thoughts for this Transformers Red, Transformers Prime, Megatron. I cannot in full confidence actually recommend this to you guys. I think for 2022, this thing is pretty poor and to be honest, is quite garbage. The sculpt work is decent. In terms of a Transformers Prime Megatron, it looks the part, but it's not painted. Had it actually been painted, I think overall it would have looked much better. The purple, whilst is nice, is not metallic purple and in hand just appears rather flat and definitely rather cheap. You guys saw when I brought in that classified Cobra Commander, he is so much better built when in comparison to this guy. The shoulders are a massive area that I have a problem with. You literally cannot pose him at all. They continuously want to spring back into place. 
and not to mention that the articulation actually just isn't good in general. For a non-transforming line, that truly should be this line's top priority, and seven waves in, we're still going through a bumpy time. I have no idea as to why this line hasn't gone through a major shakeup. We can no longer blame it on the fact that this is a new line. The likes of the Fortnite range are so good. That wave one was amazing. So as to why Transformers Red is still experiencing problems seven waves in and two years on, this line started in 2020. We're now in 2022. How they haven't fixed some of the material issues is just nuts. I do not think this is a good figure at all unless you are a diehard fan of Transformers Prime and you want a cool looking version of Megatron to go on your shelf that you plan on custom painting, then I really couldn't recommend this to you at all and I would definitely recommend that if you are going to pick this up, you wait for it to go on clearance, which you will no doubt do as it is not a good figure to begin with. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you guys think that I'm being too harsh on this Megatron? Do you think that it is actually better than I'm showcasing in this video? And what do you guys think in regards to the RED line in general? As always, I thank you all so much for watching and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.